is Jeff Snyder wrong about deflation? We're going to go over this first explaining Snyder's thesis, at least what I think Snyder's thesis is, and then we'll say why we think he's wrong. Justin's over here drinking some apple juice. I have I have mine over here as well. It so, helps fight the Rona. Yeah. We'll kind of explain the Euro, his Euro dollar thesis a little, where we saw this massive, the blue line is going to indicate um, Euro dollar bank lending, which is just any bank outside of the United States that makes a, that has a, dollar deposit in their bank account yeah and just let me just pause for one second to make sure people understand that the more dollars that are created that become spendable the more inflationary pressure that you'll see so the takeaway is is that the more new lending or the more net new lending the more net new dollars the more prices will go up now so look if we look at the chart we're going to see a massive run-up going up to 2008 and then everyone knows the global financial crisis where we saw a euro dollar system collapse and People think we've recovered since then, but this chart shows that we have not. The euro dollar system has stagnated or plateaued for the past decade with no loan growth. So if we had a system where there was a, a exponential rate of increase in loans and new dollar deposits outside of the United States for decades, and then since 2008, we've just completely stayed the same, you need a lot more dollars to to increase, to actually offset those defl deflationary pressures. If you see over there, the blue line, as long as that line is going up, there are more units of currency chasing, let's just assume, relatively the same amount of assets. As long as that's happening, the price will get bid up. That's inflation. However, and it could be productive loans, like oh, like, yeah, like, like bank absolutely. lending is a lot more productive than government spending. So this is kind of Snyder's thesis that we've plateaued and there's not enough bank lending, which means if, if Milton Freeman was right, where he said inflation is everywhere and always a monetary phenomenon, M2 money supply might be rising, but the global pie of dollars is, is not growing at the rate that it should be or is actually decreasing. And if, let's say, the euro dollar system is accounting for $75 trillion and M2 can only account for $20 trillion, there is a if twenty if M two goes up by ten percent, but the euro dollar system shrinks by five percent. There's actually a net creep, a net decrease in dollars. So what we've got right here is a chart, but the important thing to note is that it goes up to the end of twenty nineteen. So you don't yet have COVID associated with it, and the point on this is that you do see some growth in the monetary supply that's available to consumers to spend. But in just a second, we're gonna take you to the next step, which will be the same chart, but after the government's response to COVID. Yeah, and this is just the, the dollars in the household checking account. So me, you, and the average Joe. Money that can be actually deployed to seek out either financial assets, for example, if you want to buy stocks yeah, so or goods and services. Anyone can see this and they're going to say, wow, this looks just like the Shiba Ibu chart that I just bought. But uh, why? Why, if, if banks aren't lending, which we can see, but why is there this massive jump in household wealth? The explanation is the, uh, the government's response, what Justin was saying, when the Fed monetizes government debt. That just means what in 2020, when there was a stimulus check, when the government sends you a check of dollars, that is creating new currencies that are now chasing the same or fewer goods and services. So we'll go to the next chart. So Richard Warner once said that banks accounted for around 99% of all money creation. And this is prior to 2008, where the banks were lending a bunch. And then what happened after 2008? And the next chart is going to show, well, they were, they were still accounting for, say, 98% of all loans because there was a few stimulus packages in 2008, 2009, but it wasn't, they weren't, they stopped loaning to the extent that they needed to, to supply the global uh, euro dollar system. Yeah. Or to put some core context in that, they might've been rolling over loans, but they weren't making new loans or increasing the size of their existing loans. And that's the case. New dollars were not entering into the real economy. And if that's the case, that is not inflationary. That would either be disinflationary or deflationary. Yeah, and, and why is that? I would say because, let's think about it. If you have $1,000 of debt that you have to service, and there's uh, 1,200 units of currency, but every single year, an additional 100 units of currency comes into creation. So after year one, you'll have 1,300, then 1,400. But 
there be, then there comes a time where instead of the system going up by a hundred, it just flat lines. So there's just the same amount of dollars that needs to pay off this debt, but there's just, it, you would either need velocity to pick up or the lending to increase, but we just didn't see that. So that, that has a hard demand for dollars. And that's kind of where Brent Johnson's dollar milkshake theory comes into play. But this is where we are going to start to disagree from Jeff Snyder, because we think the system has changed. Let's see what what the system now looks like, at least in me and Justin's opinion. Yeah. And just let me just put some context in that. It's not to say that, you know, you've got a Snyder or someone, you know, with, you know, the incredible insight and intellect of that or a Lacey Hunt, that they're wrong. But th that is not what we're trying to say. They're right if the rules don't change, if the goalposts don't move. But if the Fed can cross the chasm and either directly issue currency units into people's spend, or do, if the Fed can issue currency units that are directly spendable by end retail users through whatever mechanism, be it indirectly or directly, that changes the game. I think even Lacey Hunt said a similar thing yes. um, okay. maybe two or three months ago. But I would say the system's already changed. In 2020, the government's re initial response to COVID was to spend money. And so here, here we have the banks, they're still having a reduction of spending, but the government is now spending with that. But when the government spends, Lazy Hunt shows it perfectly, it's it's unproductive debt. It's stagflationary that's not producing goods or services, but increasing the money supply, which we saw with the household debt chart. So why do we think Jeff Snyder is wrong? Because what is the government's response going to be to the next crisis? Let's, let's, let's just play out a thought experiment and then you can make the decision for yourself. Let's say, Justin, asset prices crash 50% and there's pain in the streets. People are losing their houses. They, they can't, they are, their entire wealth got evaporated in half. What is the government's response going to be? Do you, A, think they are going to just sit there, do nothing like the 1930s and let the economy crumble. So it'd be the deflationary response. Correct. Or are they going to step in and be the heroes? Are they going to save people? Oh, don't worry. Yeah. We will help you. And with some additional context on that, if you have the general populace crying out in pain to the politicians, I will also note that the Federal Reserve will have the cover from the politicians to come in as the good guys and say, listen, we can directly provide stimulus to the individual American or the individual American business, or even if you want, we can roll out this new digital dollar, this new CBDC. We've got you covered. And it just so happens that even though it's so sad, you've gotten into this crisis right now, we just happen to have a solution just already lined up and ready to go. Yeah, and right now that is not currently the case. The Fed cannot directly issue dollars into the average Joe's checking account. You, They need a third party. They either need the banks to lend it or the they need a uh, finance government debt, which we saw in 2020. Yeah, they have to be acrobatics in order to do yeah. that. So Jeff Snyder, I would say, is correct if the system was the same as it was in 2019. But I think the system has already changed, which is why I'm now on the inflationary camp. I would say most people are on the inflationary camp, but for the wrong reasons. Josh, would it be correct to say this, that if they don't change the rules again, you'd be more deflationary? Absolutely. So if that, if my A situation played out, if we saw a, if, if government spending completely stopped, I would be the biggest disinflationist out there, at least in asset prices. I think it's difficult for goods and services, the prices of those to go down because we have so many screwed up supply chains. Yeah. So anyway, like I said, it's really going to be I guess, a function of what happens to the rules changing. And that's probably a function of what do the people cry out for that gives the politicians cover to do whatever they want to do. Yeah. So really, it's not so much an economic question as it is a political question. Correct. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> Cute. Thank Ooh. you, Nate.